Over the next few decades, climate change is expected to present a new set of challenges to the resilience of Florida's built and natural environments. Florida's recreational boaters may be especially vulnerable to these changes, and so too those who rely upon the billions of dollars they spend each year. In this short video, we describe how climate change will affect recreational boating in Florida's coastal and inland waterways. We then discuss what can be done to ensure this important component of Florida's economy continues to thrive for decades to come. Let's begin by describing the environmental changes predicted to accompany our warming world. Over the past 130 years, both atmospheric carbon dioxide and temperature have been rising at an ever faster pace. The temperature over North America is now nearly two degrees warmer than it was during the mid-1800s. Continental and glacial ice is now melting at a record pace as the Earth's atmosphere warms. This meltwater enters the ocean and thus causes sea level to rise. Recent satellite measurements indicate sea level is rising at 3.3 millimeters per year, much faster than it had during the last 2,000 years. Warming is expected to continue, and as a consequence, sea level rise is forecast to continue accelerating towards an elevation of between 2 and 6 feet above present by the end of this century. Many coastal cities are already experiencing the effects of rising sea level, especially during an exceptional astronomic high or king tide as shown here. And of course we can't forget about western Atlantic storms. Climate change is expected to increase the frequency or magnitude of these events. How will these changes affect Florida's recreational boater? Warming temperatures will be accompanied by changing patterns of precipitation and evaporation. These will directly affect inland water levels, especially rivers and lakes fed directly by surface water runoff. Climate change is also expected to alter the temperature, turbidity, and salinity of coastal and inland waterways. Rising atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are already changing the pH or acidity of seawater by a process known as ocean acidification. These changes in water quality and chemistry have been demonstrated to alter the growth, reproduction, distribution, and health of common recreational and commercial species. In other words, when and what you catch may change if it hasn't already. The most obvious consequence of a sea level rise is the inundation or flooding of the natural and built environments to ever higher elevations. This flooding may occur during the daily tidal cycle or as a surge in association with the landfall of major storms or hurricanes. Hence, coastal wetlands and waterways will transform to ever more salt tolerant species, one obvious result of which will be a change in the type of fin and shellfish inhabiting these areas. Your favorite catch may no longer reside at locations you have fished for years. Access roads and other coastal infrastructure will be flooded, making your drive to the nearest ramp or storage facility difficult. The function of engineered structures like piers, bulkheads, seawalls, and jetties may falter as the conditions for which they were designed begins to change. Boat slips or docks may no longer provide safe harbor as waves begin to overtop breakwaters and bulkheads. And of course the clearance height of overhead obstacles like power lines and bridges will be reduced, perhaps blocking throughway to your favorite fishing hole, ramp, or marina. Saltwater intrusion may render drinking wells non-potable or accelerate the corrosion of buried fuel storage containers or sewage pipes. These effects will be most readily felt in southern Florida where elevations rarely exceed a few feet. But southern Florida is also where the vast majority of recreational boaters and boating facilities are located. Nearly every county with more than 40 boating-related structures 
shown here in shades of red, is located in southern Florida. The impact of climate change will likely be significant in the absence of a long-term vision and proper planning. What can be done to limit the vulnerability of recreational boating to climate change? Here we focus on adapting the built environment to rising sea level. There are four adaptation strategies commonly considered in built areas threatened by sea level rise. Protect, accommodate, retreat, or do nothing. Adaptation strategies are implemented in a three-step process. Assessment, planning, and implementation. During the first step, a vulnerability assessment is conducted. What area is likely impacted and what resources, either built or natural, are at risk? To get a sense of the magnitude of change we can expect as our climate warms and sea levels rise, we conducted a vulnerability assessment in Okaloosa County, Florida. What recreational boating resources are at risk to a three-foot rise in sea level? It turns out all 22 publicly accessible boat ramps and access facilities located in Okaloosa County, Florida will be inundated by a three-foot rise in sea level. Had this been an actual vulnerability assessment, the next steps would include the formulation of a strategic plan, followed by its implementation and periodic update. It is clear major U.S. ports and harbors like Los Angeles and Boston are taking the threat of climate change seriously. However, we could find no planning strategies, impact assessments, or policy documents to suggest the potential effects of climate change and sea level rise are being evaluated to ensure the resilience of recreational boating in Florida. There are plenty of boating-related studies and reports conducted in the state of Florida, however, upon which a vulnerability assessment or adaptation strategy could be built upon. These can be obtained by contacting the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, Florida Sea Grant, and of course, the Space Coast Climate Change Initiative. And there are plenty of reports dealing with climate change and sea level rise at all levels of governance from which relevant information can be obtained as well. Wind, waves, and salt water are reaching inland at ever higher elevations. The temperature and chemistry of seawater is changing. These environmental changes are already impacting elements of the built and natural environment upon which Florida's recreational boaters rely. Significant impacts may not occur for several decades, but the recreational boating community should begin to consider their options and start the planning process now.